Hey everybody, how you doing out there? It's yours truly. I'm just talking to you guys as a personal friend out there in YouTube land. That's from YouTube land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as I said, uh, yeah, we're in YouTube land. We're in a so-called community of YouTubers. Uh, so yes, uh, since I'm going to get that out of the way, we are Wednesday, February 10th, and you know what the year we're in. Uh, we're in the year 2021, if you can believe that. Yes, we're in the year 2021. Never thought I could be alive in this year, right? Um, but I'm still here, and as they say, I'm still here, I'm still alive, live and well. And um, until a few more years, I'm still g I'm getting up to my 50, 5 old, that's 5 old, uh, in terms of age. And um, a lot of people who, uh, who passed away, they're in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 80s age. Um, they're old, they're really old. They're, uh, they're the last generation like a couple of generations back um but yeah the the 70s and 80s kind of people who are living that age bracket are passing away i mean in droves uh not just few people like you always say out there folks um just in droves i mean these are old folks these are old folks they're not like uh from the 60s 70s or 50s uh these are kind of like the uh your old folks that you don't want to have around with um but like i said they're they're quite old they're getting up their age and uh you know like i said the uh human expectancy is like a hundred if you reach a hundred you're you're good you're all good but uh, not all people can reach a hundred in terms of age um uh, but uh, we're in the living in age of the end times, as a lot of people would say. We're living in the end times. And it, it, there's signs out there in the world that we're living in the end, end times. There's, because of the um, uh, Capitol Hill, the uh, mob-like, as they call them, mob-like people stormed the capital city. Um, so they did that. And uh, we're heading for the end times, folks. This is, I think, what God predicted, I think, we couldn't, couldn't, fathom, couldn't really fathom that. For a lot of people out there, couldn't fathom the worst that could ever. So we're living in end times, folks. We're living in end times for the good or for the bad. Um, but we're living in the end times, and no question about it, we're living in the end times. And um, and there's scholars out there who are saying that we're living in the end times, and I, I totally agree. We're living in the end times. Uh, after that, the uh, Capitol Hill riots, I think after that, that... Uh, really, really told a lot of people around the world we're living in times. This is just the, they already stormed the Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. And that that's kind of like, uh, it kind of took to a whole different level. So I'm assuming that uh, here on out, it's going to be living in end times. God probably predicted uh, in the revelations, as they say in the Bible of revelations, we're living in end times. We're living in those days. Um, if you're still alive, you're great. If you're not, then you're you're with me and everything's A-OK. -okay. But we're living in end times. People always say in the radio stations, TV stations, they say we're living in end times. And I, uh, at this very moment, I, I totally agree. And, and they always say the biblical standpoint the, of Bible stuff. Uh, yeah, we're living in end times. It's the Revelations. Ever heard about the Revelations um, uh, chapter? We're living that end times now. And Jesus Christ and I kept saying for many, many years that uh, he'll come back. The second coming is definitely coming back, but we don't know in what form. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus, what would Jesus predict? Uh, all this pandemic, all this uh, coronavirus that we're having in this world. Uh, what would Jesus think that us humans have to deal with this coronavirus stuff? Yeah. And... Um, no question about it. I've said many times, many years, uh, it's, it's climate change. I've, I've thought about many things about the climate change. And uh, the climate change has come and gone. I've predicted climate change here and there. Uh, uh, the weather has to do with climate change. Now, I'm not so much on it nowadays that I was back then. So, yeah. Um, I saw Huff Paranormal. Huff Paranormal. Steve Huff, whatever his name is. Uh, he does the spiritual box stuff. Uh, he talks about spirit communication uh, beyond the afterlife. Uh, what 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 happened if we all pass away and we try to communicate to our loved ones? He uses a spirit box, so-called spirit box. Uh, 
and uh, he does a, a, a great, uh, great service, as I would say, not a <laughs> disservice, but a great service for the spirits in the afterlife. And uh, he does very well. I gotta admit, after all those years I've seen him, uh, he does a good service for the spirits in the afterlife. And um, he usually says in his spirit box, he says he comes with love. He's gotta come with love with spirits. He can't come with negativity. And he's right on that one. Uh, I give him that. Uh, you know, it comes with love. So he starts off with his spirit box. He comes with love. Now you can debunk if you think that he. That's not what you do on spirit boxes. It's just a trial and error. They always say it's trial and error. You just go with you what your gut thinks. Uh, so uh, you're talking to spirits in the afterlife. The, uh, there's not. It's not just the uh, when you pass away, your body remains underground, but your spirit lives on in some capacity. Remember that. I've told this to many people. So our spirit does not die off. We're energy. We're so-called energy. So, and uh, if, you, if you have your friends talking about the afterlife, and then this is not Satanism's or uh, 666, you know, the, uh, the hell world. Um, this is, uh, now, I'm just, I've seen from videos and TV shows all about this stuff, so I'm, I'm kind of familiar about all this, about the, uh, what the world is doing these days. And we're living in the end times. After people stormed the Capitol Hill, we're living in the end times after that. We're downhill from that. Uh, so we stormed the hill, we accomplished that, as they say. We accomplished storming the Capitol Hill in D.C. And uh, they accomplished that. They really did. Uh, I don't know why, for what reason, but they did. Um, and what people say, was it not necessary? Well, it was. But uh, maybe they had to do it for that reason. Because uh, as Donald Trump said to his, as they say, his followers, his supporters, you're not going to have a country anymore. You're not going to have a country anymore. I mean that, literally. You know, it, that's what he said publicly. He said, you're not going to have a country anymore if you... Uh, these are uh, Democrats. These are uh, you know, <laughs> Democrats to... Uh, that people who work at the Capitol Hill. Um, uh, there are people pulling the strings in this world. Uh, you know, so-called pulling the strings uh, in this world of ours. It's not just you and I and people living in this world. There's people in Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., pulling all the strings for us, uh, for Canadians, Americans, pulling the strings for, you know, we're all puppets. We're all puppets around the world. I get it. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, Jesus Christ gave us a message. We're all messengers of God. Yeah, yeah. But just remember, um, I've, I've heard it from many people about all this stuff. So bear this in mind. And every direction, every religious thing that people have told me uh, through YouTube videos, to TV shows, uh, religious standpoints um, about the Bible, what the Bible thinks of the world. And... Uh, to the biblical stuff, the chapters the Bible would have. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. My friend who uh, I've lost for 31 years, it's sad, right? Um, uh, he's long gone in this world, and everybody's sad for my friend. But I knew him very well, besides everybody else, and that's no question. Uh, 31 years of friendship. This is solid friendship. Yeah, you're, uh, people would say you gotta have a friend out there who appreciates you. You know, you're not just doing it for yourself. You know, your friends will always help you out with anything in life. Uh, so, so there you go. Always have a friend in your world. You know, if not, they're not enemies. Friends are not enemies. Yeah. So, um, so I've been around a lot of people in my life. Uh, I would say close to forty years. And uh, I appreciate all the um, all the things that they told me and told my friend, uh, you know, in <laughs> life. And I uh, this uh, the humorous side of things in life is good because it really helps be alive where I am today. And uh, if it weren't for my friend, it weren't for people out there on social media or YouTube and stuff like that, give me positive feedback. I appreciate that. Um, every pe feedback is great because uh, we're. We're all in the same, we're in this world together. We're not, you know, one in one person only. So, um, 
I, I, I've scribed to tons and tons of YouTubers out there. Uh, I'm not going to mention names out there because I, I scribed to tons of them out there uh, uh, into the thousands. So, um, and they go, they range between A and Z, so the alphabet. So these are YouTube users. They call themselves YouTube users, a community of YouTubers out there. And this, whatever, whatever lifestyle they get into doing their videos, I appreciate that 100%. I'm not just teasing these people. Whatever, whatever topic they want to run by, like urban exploring to uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, musical equipment to, um, uh, yeah, so whatever lifestyle you want to get into as a personal, uh, as a personal you that you are, uh, just do what you're good at. Do what you're good at on YouTube videos. You know, put your own self out there and say, what, what could I uh, possibly put out there that people would be interested to hear? Yeah. Yeah. For it would be interesting for me and the viewers out there is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and just match it, match it if your partner is your girlfriend or your friend. Yeah, so bear that in mind. You know, uh, your partners are good because they help you out in in life. You know, um, sometimes people get down their dumps to the. It's like the rabbit hole theory. You don't want to go down the rabbit hole. I tell people a lot about that. Not don't go down the rabbit hole, um, and don't be a victim. As I keep saying, to people don't be a victim. Okay, be a hero, not a victim. Okay, uh, it's like it's like the old sayings. We grew up like kids. We grew up like uh, um, like characters in TV shows, like Superman to Wonder Woman to uh, uh, to many things. We all our characters, even the uh, cartoons are characters, and they're trying to you know. <laughs> Anything to do with, uh, remember the TV show Roll Runner? The Roll Runner trying to get after Y Coyote? <laughs> remember that? And they can't, he, can't ke he can't keep up with the Y Coyote. Uh, he's, he fails at every turn. And the old saying, he fails at every turn. And uh, he catches up, he, the Y Coyote is kind of really too fast for him. Yeah, so, anyway. What I'm trying to get at, folks, I'm saying like a pastor here, what I'm getting at is the Bible, I don't know if the Bible, Bible predicts all of the stuff in the world, they call the Bible Code. You ever heard of the book called the Bible Code? These are events that are supposed to happen in this world, in this world of ours that we're living in. Uh, it predicts events, these big, huge events around the world, including 9-11. Uh, and uh, Bible Code is just a book. It tells you about events that are about either going to happen or about to happen in the near future. And um, uh, there's a book out there called The Bible Code where it, uh, it predicts all these events, names, places, and events. And, um, and we're talking about biblical stuff here. Uh, and uh, yeah, biblical stuff. So... Bear with me. This is just a podcast show. I'm just uh, shooting the breeze, you know, as they say. And uh, speak with my mind, yes, I got that. And um, I've been around a lot of people in my lifetime. Uh, good people and not just bad people out there. Just good people. And um, And uh, Yeah. And so, like I said, folks, uh, I think a lot of people are good. They're not all bad people out there. They're not born bad. You know, Hitler was born to kill a lot of Jews. You know, we all know that. Uh, it was a heinous crime, as they say, a heinous crime. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate all the people out there, uh, no, matter which, no matter what topic they want to run by on their YouTube channels. You know, they're trying to get out the message. It's like Jesus giving us a message. We're sending our message on YouTube. Yeah. As humans on the planet, you know. We're not aliens, as I would like to say. We're not humans. We're not robots. We're humans on this planet. We have feelings. We have emotions. And, you know, it's, uh, we go through a lot of emotions. It's like anybody in the world. And we either cry or, or uh, be happy about something that we don't like. And... Uh, you know, we're all human, right? Like, we're not robots. As I tell my friends, we're not all robots, you know? Robots don't have feelings. They do what they need to do, and that's it. So, um, 
I want to thank all those YouTubers who appreciate my YouTube views all the time. I do have people who give me feedback about my YouTube channel. And uh, give me good luck on it. <laughs> you do a great job out there. And uh, I'm glad you guys are definitely subscribing. I appreciate that 100%. And uh, yeah, I've been around this world for 40 plus years. 40, 40 plus years. Uh, I, I wasn't born in the 90s. Nope, if you're wondering about that. And uh, uh, born in the 80s. I came through the, uh, through the early 80s music. And I uh, swear <laughs> that. And uh, yeah, there was cool videos in those days. I've said uh, a long time ago that early 80s music was great. Uh, yeah. So I said uh, recently about uh, Neil Peart. Remember that drummer Neil Peart? Well, Neil Peart was the ultimate drummer around the world. He was the coolest drummer that I ever saw in my life. I, I didn't go up to him, talk to him or shake his hand or anything, but I... Just look at him on those videos and stuff. He was a cool drummer, like th thumbs up. He had the he had the biggest drum set that a kid can ever have. Yeah. He had so many cymbals, so many so many cymbals, so many tom toms, so many bass drums. I mean, it was an I was like uh, it was like I guess they he thought was big is better, right? Big is better. So you have many cymbals, many drums, many snares, you know. Yeah, it's got to be all around me, all around me. Yeah. And uh, Neil Peart was the coolest drummer in my eyes. Yeah, just looking at him and have that drum in front of him, uh, the drum set he has in front of him, I think he's pretty cool. Yeah. And I kind of thought, well, maybe I should get into drumming again. Maybe I should just <laughs> forget about DJing anymore and just get into drumming. So... And uh, I, I kind of listened off those Rush albums, and um, he was a fast drummer. I, I know right away when I was listening to those songs, there, he was a faster drummer than I realized, that I give him credit to. Yeah. 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 But he's a good drummer. He was very good. Uh, every time I hear the song, I always hear him playing the drums really fast. Like, I don't know, it was a fast tempo drumming, uh, but uh, it was good. It was good. Um, uh, one of my girlfriends, um, I think he was friends with somebody in the band member uh, of Rush. So he, she told me a story about it. It was fascinating for me. So, uh, what else? What else? Um, just a lot of things in life. Um, I appreciate those people who are trying to shed light about everything in the world. Um, whatever topic they wouldn't run by. Um, and uh, it's really hard to get a, a grasp of a topic that I want to run by that sounds interesting to you people out there. Uh, uh, you know, that would uh, say, hey, I want to take a look at this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so just keep up what you're doing, guys. Just, I really appreciate 100%. Uh, everything you put out there is really good, you know. Um, uh, uh, for a while there, there's this guy who apparently in his lineage uh, family tree, he, uh, had a dad who uh, was um, to a silly Caroline. This is back in the early 1800s. And apparently this was almost uh, the uh, the crime of the century. This was the crime of the century back in the 1800s. Not recently. Yeah, it was terrible at the time. He had a um, he was explaining, he was going to great, great detail about his family lineage, or whatever the word is. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a good story. I really listened to Tenley. It was a very interesting uh, mystery. It was kind of like a mystery story. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's good. That's having a uh, lucky you have in your family tree, you're, you know, you look at your lineage, as they would say. And yeah. So it was this uh, dad part of the family that, uh, you know, it's like heck the dots, you know, from the lineage. So there you go, folks. Um, I don't need to brag on about this, but I want to appreciate you guys for listening to my YouTube channels. I'm trying to put the best content out there. And, uh, oh, the Juggernugger. Yes, he was about to shut down his uh, story fire. Uh, we wasn't joking, everybody. He was going to shut down his, he was this close to shutting down the service of story fire. Uh, you might have seen his videos out there. Uh, 
he was so happy. It was like, <laughs> lucky his friend helped him out on that. I give him credit on that one. Uh, so his friend came, uh, came through with it. Uh, it was, <laughs> it's, you had to pay a lot of money to have an app and a website. I kid you not. So bear that in mind, folks. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a business venture, you know, it's like anything in the world, it's a business venture. So there you go, folks. Anyway, I'm not going to, I'm talked a lot. I want to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. You guys can comment on my video here and uh, on the doobly do, as they say, uh, on the comment sections. And uh, what do you think of my comments? Um, I will put this in good audio so you guys can listen to me and I'll put EQs on it uh, so I can hear it very clearly enough. And uh, yeah, and any, any takers, as they say, any takers to my comment section. No, uh, I'm not open for any comments. If you want to, um, you guys are, I'm giving you guys options. You can put comments on there if you want. I'm giving you guys options. It's just there if you want to comment on my videos. Yeah. You don't have to because I can keep going with these videos as much as much as possible. Um, I will title them. If you're wondering, I'll to put them subtitled on them. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all the feedback. Yes, feedback. I'm trying to listen to other YouTubers, what they do on their YouTube channels. Uh, yeah, give me feedback on my YouTube channel. And uh, just do what you have to do. And hit that like button. Hit that like button and share that button. Yes, share that button. And most importantly, uh, you can share the videos if you want. And uh, yeah, see what you think, as they would say. See what you think. And uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope, hopefully, in my next several decades, if I live that long, um, I hope you guys will listen to my videos. As if I pass away, you guys will listen to my videos. And say that guy was good. There was, there was a hundred YouTubers that passed away. I kid you not. But these are YouTubers I haven't heard of before. Um, a hundred YouTubers, if you can believe that. hundred YouTubers passed away. I mean, I kid you not. These are YouTubers I haven't heard of before. Um, so, uh, but a hundred YouTubers, I'm not kidding. There was a video out there saying a hundred YouTubers passed away. Like, really passed away in the past, what, 20 years, 10 years? Uh, so yeah, these were these were YouTube users, and a uh, hundred of them passed away in the past ten years or so. Uh, to many reasons, uh, I'm not going to say, but uh, people had cancer, to stage five cancer, to stage six cancer. God forbid, I don't get cancer. Um, but yeah, hundred YouTubers. These are YouTubers I haven't heard of before, uh, mind you. It's not like I'm not used to them, you know. But 100 YouTubers passed away. Um, all they all got their YouTube sh channel going, and um, and then all of a sudden they passed away to many reasons. Remember, there many too many reasons. So, it's not to the coronavirus. It's done to uh, natural causes. They always say natural causes. Well, that's what they passed away with. Uh, uh, so, yeah, support these people who are still doing YouTube channels because you never know if there's ever. Uh, a disease or a cure we want to do the cure part right the cure part um, it's like a band-aid effect as I call it this band-aid yeah but uh, the cure thing um, as a lot of you people know already we're living in the age of uh, vaccines now this vaccines that people are talking about I'm a little leery on it um, uh, always always ask your family doctor if you're allowed to take one of these vaccines Always ask your family doctor before you take these vaccines. I kid you not, folks. Uh, don't listen to what they say, you know. Because um, remember, it's volunteer basis. Remember, it's a volunteering basis. It's for your health, as they would say. I'm saying it nicely. It's your health. So if you want to take these vaccines, it's up to you. But like I said, I'm a little leery about these vaccines that people are taking these days. Um, always ask your family doctor before uh, you take vaccines, any vaccines out there. I always, uh, you know, you have the right to ask, and is it okay for me to take these vaccines? Ask your family doctor, say to them, is it okay to me to take these vaccines uh, for my, uh, for my better? Because the doctors are like your, uh, how do you say, your, um, they're in the health field. They know uh, if it's good or bad to, if you can take these vaccines. 
Uh, so always, always, uh, as they say in commercial ads, ask your family doctor. And that's for anybody around the world. Uh, I mean that literally. Ask your family doctor before you take these vaccines, these vaccines that they mention around the world. Um, so always ask your family doctor if you're allowed to take these vaccines because they're under your care. Remember, as they say, under your care. That's for anybody around the world. Um, uh, or your family doctor, whatever the case may be, because uh, they're looking out for you as a family do a family physician or something. Uh, and uh, that's all I want to say for you guys out there. Uh, people are a little worried about these vaccines that they're getting. And um, knowing that they test all these vaccines, okay, just bear this in mind. Knowing that they test all these vaccines, people are not really sure about this. Uh, you know, you got to make sure what they put on your inside your body. Remember that. Uh, so, so just remember that. Just remember that you're some people are on doctor's care. You got to make sure these these vaccines are okay for you to take. Remember that, folks. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, if it's uh, you know for you to do these sort of things, because other than that, uh, I would say uh, I'll be a little worried about these vaccines that people are taking these days, about the COVID nineteen or whatever they're calling these things. Uh, so, and just ask your family physician, when you go into a family physician or, you know what they say in commercial ads, uh, go ask them to see if you can take these vaccines and uh, make sure it doesn't do anything bad to your, your body. You don't want to have to end up in a hospital. I'm not kidding, folks. So, um, you just want things that are natural to your body, natural to your body, as they would say. Um, I would say that to any human on the planet. So bear that in mind. You don't want to be ill. You don't want to land up in a hospital and, you know, you're in your deathbed kind of thing. So bear that in mind, folks. I want to stress this strongly because uh, I, I, I look out for everybody out there. I really do. You know, when you end up in a hospital in the, you know, deathbed, these people who are, have uh, COVID-19, they're in their deathbed. I, I can't help them. I really can't. Uh, we let the doctors do that one. But just remember, I'm looking out for everybody out there. It's a community of YouTubers out there. I'm looking after them out there. Uh, you know, making sure they're in the straight and narrow in their lives. And uh, if, you know, when need be, I'll help them out. <laughs> you know, to get, out to, to get to the next day, you know. Uh, yeah, so there you go, folks. I'm here to help out the YouTubers like I helped out my friend. Uh, so I'm here to help the YouTubers, whatever lifestyle they get into, and videoing. And so uh, I want them to be alive, not dead, like they're at their dead bed, you know. Uh, we don't want that to happen. These people who had the COVID-19, uh, that's, that's, that's terrible. That re is really terrible, folks. So uh, usually the doctors are out there, uh, they try to do everything to, you know, as they say, heal the person but they have this pandemic going on. Uh, so they try their best, they're trying their best to... Yeah, so there you go. I'm not gonna rant, rant and rave about it, but this is a lengthy podcast, it's 28 minutes. But I wanna say to you guys, just keep going to what you're doing out there. I have a lot of YouTubers I subscribe to, tons and tons of YouTubers I subscribe to. Um, doesn't matter what age you're at. Um, yeah, so there you go, folks. Uh, appreciate all the YouTubers, all the feedback I get from their videos and uh, positive uh, feedback. And uh, yeah, just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Oh, by the way, those cop watch people out there, uh, keep doing what you're doing on that one. I appreciate those videos immensely. I mean, I'm not kidding. The people that uh, watch out for the cops and film the cops, the First Amendment right, you know. Um, uh, they say, if you go out there with your cameras, film the police, whatever uh, interactions they have out there, just film the police like they say in their, in their intro videos. Film the police because you, you have the First Amendment right to do so. Remember that. Uh, so take out your camera, film the police, whatever police interaction out there. Yes, they do mean that because remember, you got the First Amendment right. Remember that, folks, if you're American. Yeah, so. so there you go, folks. You learned something from me. I didn't tell you that. You learned it from YouTubers out there yeah it's a constitution right to film the police because you got the first amendment right remember that from photography standpoint uh, so, so so there you go
so be well aware of that go do go out there fill the place a lot of uh a lot of auditors the so-called auditors as they would deem them as uh, uh they're out there filming the police and uh holding them accountable you know as they say or the tyrants they call them tyrants right uh so yeah and uh yeah uh johnny 50 uh, as, as you know he's a youtuber out there uh, go look him up Johnny Five O, he's he's amazing what he does. I'm not kidding. <laughs> he's amazing what he does. And uh, Johnny Five O, I I always forget how he says his name, but yeah, he's uh, he's an auditor, so-called auditor, and he goes out there, uh, Ventilanti, how you say Ventilanti, and film the police, and uh, <laughs> and he's pretty good at it. I gotta admit, he's quite good at it uh, for his own. Including. Uh, yeah. And he holds the police accountable, you know, the uh, transparency thing. Yeah. So there you go, folks. I'll bid you a goodbye, bro, uh, everybody. Ciao for now, everybody, on, on podcast.